Mm -hmm. Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how I made a bright LED light out of an old TV that didn't work. So you might be asking yourself, why would you want to do this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. So first, if you have an old TV laying around that has a broken LCD or something's wrong with it. So the example that I have for my TV is its motherboard was broken. So the only way to fix it would be to buy a new motherboard. But since I got the TV for free, I didn't want to spend any more money on it. Another reason is that it creates a really, really bright light, which is good for filming or photography. And so if you're getting this TV for free, who doesn't want really bright lights? Um, and then the final reason would be that the light, not only is it really bright, but because of all the special layers in the TV, uh, it's also a really high quality diffused light. So I kind of got the idea for this project from a YouTube channel called DIY Perks. But what I'm going to try and do differently is that instead of using uh, off the shelf LED strips like what he did, and then having my own wiring, I'm going to try to use the TV's original circuitry and LEDs that come in the backlight to make it. Let's snap right into it. All of the parts for this project can be found in the project box. So the first thing we're gonna need from the project box is a screwdriver. Next, we're also going to need a multimeter. I have two multimeters, but I'm gonna be using the worst one for this project in case it gets fried. Next, we're also going to need a soldering iron because there's gonna be a little bit of soldering involved. You know, hopefully a very small amount of soldering involved considering the uh, small amount of solder I have. Uh, we're also going to need a safety warning so this project involves using some pretty dangerous stuff like probing a circuit that's plugged in so unless you want to get electrocuted and die if you don't know what you're doing don't try this please i kind of know what i'm doing and even i'm a little bit scared uh safety uh next what we're going to need is the television. So for the TV, you're going to want one that isn't a CRT TV, so it can't be one of those big thick TVs. Uh, and you're also going to want a TV that has either a motherboard issue or an LCD issue. But what's key is that the TV backlight does turn on. So if you turn on the TV, it just has to turn on for a little bit, but if you see light coming through, you're in business. Okay, the first step is disassembly. Uh, I already took off the LCD for this. Uh, it's pretty easy. If you're building this, you probably should know how to take it off. It's like, get in there with a screwdriver. Uh, but right now I'm just going to unscrew everything to access the circuit board. Uh, ignore these wires coming out. This was to test to see if anything was going to work at all before I made a video. Let's grab the screwdriver. I already took off some of these to make the video a little bit less cringe. Uh, normally you should put these in a bowl or another container. Put them in my hand or pocket or mouth. Don't put these in your mouth. All right, so now we have all of the skin taken off. Uh, I removed some other things that you may or may not need to remove. So the speakers I unplugged. Um, and that leaves us with the on button. This is kind of like the power supply circuit. So this is what we're gonna be messing with. And then this is the brain. So the issue with this TV was that it kept going and boot looping, which means it kept turning on and trying to find its firmware and then giving up. Hopefully, otherwise comments might roast me. Um, anyway, it'll turn on and then it turns back off. So what I'm going to do is first unscrew this and then figure out when it's turned on, what these wires are doing and what they're telling the power supply to do. Because there's only one way for the power to leave here, 
but there's a whole lot of different combinations that the computer can be saying. So we're just gonna unscrew this, flip it upside down, and then uh, do what the aliens love most and uh, get probing. So this next part, I skipped filming because my mom would not approve. But uh, essentially what I did is you turn it on and I'd see which one of these uh, points changed voltages when it was on versus when it was off. And then I wired it up uh, so that I could control when it was on or off, which turned out, um, so this is the ground because it's black, of course. Um, so I found out that those two need to have five volts for it to stay on. So what I'm now going to do is connect this long cable to the outside to a five volt power source because that way I can control when it's turning on and off the screen. Here we have the power supply all wired up. This is just one meant for an Arduino. So it also has a little USB thing. Uh, as you can tell, off, on, yeah. Let's take a look at the front. All right, so let's take a, take a look when we turn it on. Mm, that is just absolutely blinding to look at. Yeah, so super bright. And uh, what's cool is because of the different layers of diffusers, the light doesn't really fall off very quickly when you point at something. So uh, we'll just do a test real quick by pointing it at me and then comparing it to a really bright uh, flashlight. Now and we'll, we'll kind of measure its brightness by how much it hurts to look at. So here we have with no lights. And what I'm gonna get my uh, fabulous cameraman to do is turn on the, the flashlight. So yeah, it hurts to look at. Definitely, you can see I'm illuminated. It's fairly a, a spotlight type shape. So yeah, just more pain. And that is, <laughs> that's not nice. Okay. Now let's try the uh, I'm just trying to find it. Okay. TV light. <laughs> oh, that's like a flash bang. <laughs> wow, yeah. No. Um, Wait, let's just do a double take there, because now, now I have it in my hands, and so I can go okay, and take. So here we are. Oh. <laughs> Here we are again in the dark, and I'm just going to ask you to turn on the uh, the TV light. And that is just wonderful. It is so bright, nice for filming. It's a little bit too blue to use as like a, a fake light, like a fake uh, outdoor la lamp inside. Um, but if you add some tints to it, it could look nicer. But this is good for photography and stuff. Yeah, you can, it's just so bright. So, so bright. Don't die by like a commission. <laughs>